dose of hope. You know you're tuned into the right place because this is Hope Today where we love to give you 30 minutes of encouragement, of inspiration, all coming from the Holy Spirit, from God and Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad, Amy, we are here today because Tom is off onto the sunset on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for Tom. While he's off, I am in full bore back to school mode with the children going back to school. Let's pray for all the moms out there, all the kids out there, all of the teachers out there that are getting ready. You know, next week uh, across the state, everybody starts and goes back. So back to routine, back yes. to structure, back to education. It's great. And so with all that's going on in the world, you know, so much to think about, so yeah. much to pray about, so many highs and lows and things that we're just handling in our emotions and, and in our prayer life. And so it's um, important to be awake and alert right now. It's so true, Amy, to be impo it's important for us to be awake and alert. And you know, a lot of us are going through certain things with the pandemic brought on a lot of mental health crisis. There's the opioid epidemic that's going on, or maybe even during this time of isolation, certain things you just realize a lot about yourself. And I just wanna ask you, you know, do you suffer from low self-esteem or is there trauma in your life that's keeping you stuck? Well, you know, God cares about your well-being, and guess what, we do too. And that's why in a few moments, you're gonna meet Kathy Allward, who's gonna share how you can experience whole in your life and find that energy that only God can give so we can be balanced, that we can be healed and we can be whole, Amy, because right now more than ever, I think with so much turmoil just going on our personal lives, even we're seeing what's happening in the world. I know you and I both and all of you probably watching at home have had our eyes on what's happening in Afghanistan, which is just such a heartbreaking situation. You know, this morning I was at the gym and I just saw in the headlines what's going on. I mean, it's such a desperate situation. You see the videos of just the calamity. People are fleeing. Just just taking their children and handing them off to people so that they can find freedom. I was even seeing, just even broke my heart, is that they took a female journalist off air. So just, I just think about, you know, we're here every day. Like I couldn't imagine if somebody just took us off and said, you don't have a voice and you can't speak. It's such a dire situation. One of their female mayors in Afghanistan was also taken into custody by the Taliban. And, and I, maybe you got this text yesterday, but they were texting that, um, you know, 200 and, 25 Christian missionaries were being sentenced to death happening like soon. And, you know, there was an email that I saw that, you know, the believers in Afghanistan, if you could imagine this, are, are saying with great gladness that they will probably meet Jesus face to face within the next two weeks. And so that's what we're dealing with in the world. How do we pray as the church? You know, yeah. somebody messaged me this morning. How do I pray? I don't even know where to start. Yeah. And, and what I think we need to be careful of is that we're praying out his will. Yeah. We're praying out his plan. We're praying out his agenda on earth. We don't see all, we don't know all, we're not God. But I do know this, that God is setting everything up right now in perfect divine order for the second coming of Christ. So all of us as the church, we need to be awake, alert, and we need to be about the Father's business and in prayer. We surely do. You know, I just think about your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And during these serious times, these perilous times, what's happening in Afghanistan and different parts of the world, you know, something um, Amy and my husband and I were just talking about, if you even look in the Bible and you think about the apostles and all the persecution they went through and that they were beheaded and that they were killed and just hearing what you're sharing about what's happening in Afghanistan, the Christians are just saying like, you know what, for the glory of God, I'm really to yes. risk my life, risk it all. And I wow. think it's a sobering moment for all of us is like, what if that happened to us here? Would be we ready to say, yes. Will we be ready to lay our lives down? So let us all as the body of Christ come together like never before. We are the ecclesia. We are the kingdom of God. He has called us to be ambassadors and we can pray for things and believe for revival to break out in Afghanistan. I'm believing Amy that the Taliban that they're going to have dreams of Jesus is yes. going to appear. Amen. I'm just believing certain supernatural is going on in the midst of the darkness. We know that God is working in it all together yeah. for his good. Oh no, we have to stand in the gap yeah. as believers. You know how you can't just watch and not do anything. You can't watch and, and just feel sad about it. You've got to be led by the spirit of God and you've got to hit your knees in prayer and we've got to hook up in our faith and we've got to say, God, protect the women, protect the children, protect the church. Let them see dreams and visions. Let them see Jesus. Let them keep their eyes fixed on heaven.
truly need to keep our eyes fixed on heaven. And the way that we do that is we have the word of God that we stand on because we know his promises are true. And today our word of the day is from Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6. It's one of my favorite all time scriptures. It is one you're probably very familiar with. It is trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amy, break that down for us. What does that speak to Oh man, I love that scripture. So if you don't have that scripture written down, you know, by your mirror, or by your bed or somewhere. I like too what it says in the Passion Translation. Do not rely on your own opinions. Oh my gosh, do, or your own understanding. Like we only know in part, we only see in part. That's why we have to know the word of God. That's why we cannot be biblically illiterate. That's why we can't listen to all these little 30 second news clips mm -hmm. and create absolute truths on. We have to build our lives on the word of God. If we're feeding on a bunch of junk, what's going to get in our heart yeah. is crazy, sadness, depression, anxiety. I'm overwhelmed, I can't take it. And Sydney, that's not God's best with it for us. So let's get in his word. Yeah, we really need to get in his word because it fills up our spirits. You know, there's a lot of things that are going in the world. We've just been talking about Afghanistan and we just keep on seeing it happen, you know? And things can strip us away from the truth of who God has called us to be. And you know what? We're so excited because we have Kathy Allwright who's with us and she has a new book called Energy, Eight Steps to Energize Your Life from the Inside Out. And she's here to talk about her journey and how you can have spiritual, mental, and physical wellness in your life. Kathy, welcome to Hope Today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, you guys. And I'm thrilled to hear the way you've, you know, knowing that God's in control of our country right now. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, you know, Kathy, I wanna bring you into this conversation about trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and leaning not on your own understanding. What does that speak to you? What does it mean to you? You know, um, that I speak about fear in my book. Um, so many women are just overcome with fear in these days, especially the last few years have been especially um, fearful for so many women. And even a few years ago, um, I had actually gone through a major uh, jaw surgery in my own life and I was recovering when the pandemic hit. So it was especially fearful for me. Um, and I really felt like God had me on my knees um, during the night season, he would wake me up and I felt a real burden for our country, for the world and what we were gonna be facing. I could feel kind of a premonition of it and the Lord set it on my heart to pray. And so God brought that um, of trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Um, in all your ways, acknowledge him, he will direct your path. In so many ways, we try, like Amy said, we try to rely on our own opinions, on our own, you know, the way we think it should turn out or the way we're fearful or how we think things should turn out. But God wants us to trust in him completely and to realize that he has this world, he has our lives in his hands and he knows the outcome and we win. So I'm really excited for that verse. That verse has been the biggest verse in the book for me. So I'm excited to share that too. You know, Kathy, I can relate because that verse has means so much to me as well, just trusting on him and leaning on him. You know, tell us a little bit about your story and that your background. Yeah, for sure. So I've been married years. I have three grown sons and my husband and I lived in Southern California for about 24 years and raised our boys there. So a few years ago, we decided to move up to Portland and at that time, it was quite a change for us. We were empty nesters. And I'll never forget, I was exhausted during those years and that, that year especially. And I got up to Portland and we actually lived in a high rise. So we had a storeroom. And I remember my husband had put all of our extra stuff. You know how you collect stuff for years and years and we get overwhelmed with clutter sometimes in our lives. And I remember walking to the storeroom one day I was looking for an important document and I'll never forget, I walked into this storeroom and I looked around and it was a mess. I, I'm normally a very organized person, but I walked in there and I just went, this is a mess. And I felt like God said, this is a metaphor for your life, Kathy. This is why you're so tired. You need to get your life. You need to go down to the foundation of your life and clean up your life. And this book came to me and I've studied and researched it. And the Lord showed me that I needed to clean up my life spiritually, mentally, and physically. 
So he wanted me to clean up in the areas of my spiritual life and connect with him and to clean up my mental life and reset my mindset and, you know, clean up my mental life and then also get my physical life, my atmosphere, I call it in the book, cleaned up. And those three areas of our lives, I think in women, I, I had talked to so many other women who told me how tired they were. They were exhausted with stress of life and with everything that they had accumulated in their lives. And I just felt like God was showing me how to clean up our lives and really learn how to find energy and to rest in his grace. You know, Kathy, I know a lot of women can relate. A lot of people can relate where they need this reset. You know, everything with the pandemic and shifting, we've had a lot of times with ourselves and to see what's going on and what's happening. And, you know, on the outside, you know, a lot of people may not know, but you own a record label, a Christian record label, Maranatha Music with your husband, Randy. And so you're accomplished and all these things are going on. But I think a lot of us, you know, well, on the outside, we have so many th good things that are going on, but in the inside, we're wrestling and dealing with things. So can you talk to us a little bit about some of the personal things you wrestle with? You know, one thing you said, you're a reformed perfectionist. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> right. So I am a pastor's kid, and I actually um, felt the pressure. I hate to say it, but a lot of pastor's kids feel it, too, um, of trying to perform and to look a certain way for other people, which was a really the opposite of the way God wants us to, to grow up and to connect with him. So over the years, I've learned I, I became a perfectionist because I was always trying to please other people instead of God. And that is absolutely the opposite way that God wants us to live. He wants us to learn to please him first and to find our joy and our, you know, fulfillment in God and not other people and their opinions of other people. And so when I learned to let go of the opinions of what other people thought of me and really concentrate um, my purpose and, and, you know, direct my purpose towards God, my life has absolutely changed and done a 180. And I'm so excited to say that God is taking me every day closer to him and I'm drawing closer to him. And I truly feel that that's where you'll find your fulfillment is connecting with God and not looking to perfectionism or worrying about what other people think, which is so easy to do in today's society. So I'm really excited about that. Kathy, what are some things that drain our energy, that steal from the life that God wants us to have? Well, you know, as women, I think we're natural warriors. And I just, you know, I, I find a lot, I've met so many women who have come up to me and said, Kathy, what do I do about this? Or, you know, look at what's going on in the world around us. And you guys were talking about it today. It's devastating what's happening in Afghanistan and, and even, you know, with, the women and children that are left there. And I know women and children, well, women actually have such a compassion for other people and for their own families. And we are, we are natural warriors. And I believe God is teaching me and I want to help women discover for themselves how to, like I said, trust in the Lord with all their hearts and learn to give our worries and cares to God because he truly can take he, he can handle whatever we can give him. <laughs> and so we need to learn how to trust in him completely. And, you know, I walk through eight powerful steps in my book to show women how to place their lives in his hands. Um, each step draws them closer to connecting with God and truly learning how to give him our worries and our cares. You know, Kathy, a lot of women, they're probably sitting watching, like, I want that to happen, but what does that practically look like? If there's somebody watching right now, like, I'm worried about this, I'm stressed out about this, I just feel like there's chaos and turmoil all around me. What is the first step that they can take to experience that healing in their inner being? Well, like I said, you need to, I, I, the, one of the verses I love in the book and that I use through three ch chapters is God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power love and a sound mind. And I truly feel like we are responsible for our own thoughts. I believe it starts in our own minds. And I think we need to protect our minds. I, I truly, I take through chapters five and six, I talk about sound mind. And in chapter six, especially, I talk about being an overcomer. And I talk about getting rid of the subconscious, the narrative that may have been in our heads for years, um, that may be distracting us 
from truly finding the power that God has available for all of us through the Holy Spirit that's living inside of us. So we are responsible for our thoughts. We are responsible for our minds and we are responsible even for the narrative, the subconscious thoughts that we have. And so I really dig deep in chapters five and six and take women through steps to learn how to change their mindsets because that's where it starts. It starts in our mind and that's where the enemy attacks us is in our mind. So I love, I'm, I'm so excited for women to get um, my book, especially with chapters five and six, and learn how to redirect our thoughts towards God and towards establishing peace in our minds and not letting our minds wild with crazy, fearful thoughts. And I truly feel that God has a peace for all of us to live in. That is so right, that we have a peace that God wants us to experience because that's what Jesus gives us, the peace that the world cannot give. You know, we're going to be back in 60 seconds. More with Kathy Allward. We'll be right back. God, I feel so helpless. Lord, I don't even know what to pray. God, are you listening? We've all had situations that feel insurmountable. We want to pray, but don't know where to begin. If you have a mountain in your life that needs to be moved, let us send Prayers That Move Mountains for your best gift to the ministry. In the pages of this handbook of Prayers We Know God Answers, you will discover prayers of repentance, confession, obedience, submission, praise, and worship. Prayer and confession of scripture are two of the most powerful weapons we have in life. Keep this invaluable tool with you wherever you go and be prepared with powerful declarative prayers for every circumstance. To receive your very own Prayers That Move Mountains, call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving. We are back with our special guest, Kathy Allward and her new book, Energy, come on, who doesn't need some energy right now? Just talk to any mom of three, pastor, entrepreneur, just to be alive today. We need the energy and the life of God working in us. So Kathy, I just wanna come back to the conversation about your thoughts. And you know, we know the scripture, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So. You know, let's walk through a practical situation where, uh, you know, you, you just moved away. You're in a new season of life. You're an empty nester. And what thoughts are coming in? How did you take them captive? What did you replace them with? And how did you make the change practically? Yeah, so um, I... I had been the young mom like you. <laughs> I had three boys. I was exhausted at that time. And then I was the busy teen mom, which you'll, you'll realize someday is just as tough in any other way. And then I did become the empty nester. And of course, <clears throat> I felt these thoughts that came at me and said, man, you're, you're done. You know, you're like <laughs> done with your life. You know, your purpose is done when your boys are gone. And you know, I had to combat that and say, no, I am not done. I believe there's a purpose for each one of us women, each of us in every phase of our lives, whatever phase you may be in right now, women that are out there right now, I just declare to you today that God can give you the strength to face whatever you might be facing right now and, and come against that in the name of Jesus and rebuke that lie that you, you don't have the strength to, you know, make it because maybe the bills are hanging over your head or, you know, maybe your, your relationship with your husband isn't doing great right now. And, or maybe your kids are acting up or I don't know what phase of life you're in right now, or, or you're an empty nester and you feel like your, your worth is kind of finished right now. I just want to tell you in every phase of your life, I've talked to so many women who have told me they're just so exhausted with life. And yeah. And I, they want this hope. They want to have the hope that God has an energy waiting for each one of us. And it's incredible. I just want to tell you, when you get your life cleaned up, when you start spiritually, you have to start on the inside of you. You have to start spiritually and then to your mental life, like I said, to guard your mind. And then finally, to clean up your atmosphere. I talk practically about cleaning up the atmosphere in your home and in your own 
you know, body in your own life. And there's so many powerful eight steps, powerful eight steps to help women discover this energy. Cause I know every woman is looking for more energy. Cause I know I was, and literally I would have salespeople following me around Sephora and following me, you know, the hairdressers in the store and they'd be saying, when's this book coming out? I want to find energy. I need more energy in my life. And I just, I truly believe that there are powerful steps that God has for each of us to take in this book. And it's going to help women find the energy that they've needed for so long. So I'm excited. You know, Kathy, as you're talking about the energy, one of the greatest energy that we receive is the love of God. But so many people and something you even share as a testimony don't understand the unconditional love of God. And because of maybe growing in a religious system or just different things in life that they experience this condemnation. Can you break that down and explain how that zaps us from the energy that God is calling us to walk out in? Absolutely. Like I said, I did struggle with perfection and so many women, I know it's just, just not, not just me, but so many other women struggle with trying to feel good enough. And I know that God wants us, first of all, to love him. But guess what? The second thing we need to do is to love ourselves. So many women don't truly love themselves. And I, in chapter um, seven, I talk about being gratefully imperfect. I love being gratefully imperfect because we're grateful for every part of us, you know, whether we have thick thighs or, you know, my mother's arms, which I have, or whatever we have that's not perfect, we can learn how to be gratefully imperfect for everything that we have. And I truly feel that God wants us to live with feeling his love, the great love that he has for us. But he also wants us, I stress this in the book, to love ourselves. We have to love ourselves. And then when we love ourselves, we're able to love others. Yeah, I mean, the love of God changes everything in our life. Kathy, could you just pray right now for women who they feel so tired, so worn out, and, you know, and, and maybe even starting to sink into that depression, that oppression that um, the devil would love to take them out. And can you just pray that they would just sense the love of God and the life of God today in their lives? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you so much. Dear Father, I just thank you today in the name of Jesus. I thank you for each and every person that's listening today, especially the women that are out there that may just be exhausted in their life, that may just be ready to just say, I don't know what to do. Father, I, I speak to them right now that your power and your grace will surround their home and surround their life right now in the name of Jesus. I speak energy that comes from you, Father. I speak your powerful um, energy and your Holy Spirit to fill their home right now in the name of Jesus. Their family will be protected. I speak protection around each woman listening today. And I speak your power into their life to energize them from the inside out with your love, your power, and your joy today, Father. In the name of Jesus, I come against the enemy that wants to attack the world. I come and I pray for the people in Afghanistan today. I pray for your peace to surround them, Lord Jesus. I pray for a miracle, intervention over our country. In the name of Jesus, over the world today, Father, in the name of Jesus, may your power and your presence come down over us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Kathy, thank you so much for just sharing with us and just praying for our viewers. Her book is called Energy, Eight Ways, Eight Steps to Energize Your Life from the Inside Out. Such a blessing, Amy. Thank you, thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, Amy, it's just like thinking about, you know, just a lot of people are walking through things and dealing with certain things. And one thing that God was just even putting in my spirit is that, you know, there's this wearing out of the saints that's happening even in this season that you feel like you're surrounded. You feel like you're being bogged down. You're being weighed down, but you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. And I think there's so many of you, maybe it's just like your family situation, your kids situation. You're just like, I've had enough. I feel like I'm getting beat up and battered by the enemy. But today we're just so glad that you're tuning in because we want to give you a dose of hope and knowing that through Christ, when you keep your mind on him whose mind is stayed on Jesus you will keep their mind in perfect peace I think this is a really great conversation to have you know about like it, it's good to do a self checkup like like do I have the life of God working in me do I get up every day with 
purpose and passion and energy. Like if we really believe that the Holy Spirit has come to make his home within us and that that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, he quickens and he energizes our mortal bodies. So we can't speak death and expect life. We've got to have our words line up with what God's word says over our life. And if we're not in a place of victory, if we're not on the offense, then we're in a place of defeat, of, of overwhelming, of, of the victim. And I say in Jesus' name, snap out of it and come up and live the life that God has called you to be. Because how in the world can we take a stand for Afghanistan and take a stand for America and pray for our city if we ourselves are down and out. And I mean, there are seasons where it they're not good and there are hard times, but even in the hard times, God is with you and he will strengthen you and he will equip you and he is with you. And it is a mindset. It is what you're saying out of your mouth. So I would say, do whatever it takes, Sydney, to win. You know, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is Jehoshaphat and there was a battle going on and I just remember they got on their knees and they just worshiped the Lord. And sometimes that's all you can do, that you know that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. And so sometimes even in the morning or whatever time, I just encourage you to get on your knees and just give it to God and just to let it go and just to praise Him and to thank Him and to make those declarations of your life because I'm telling you, no matter how many times the enemy is coming at you, because sometimes it's, you don't fight fair because he's doing something in us and God is just like, it's, he wants you to push through because I believe in this season that the body of Christ is going to see their breakthrough like never before. The breakthrough for your marriage, the breakthrough in your finances, the breakthrough for your children, the breakthrough for the city, the breakthrough through this nation, the breakthrough through the world. If we believe that revival is coming, if we know that his kingdom is coming, then we have to believe like never before. He has called us for such a time as this. So rejoice even if you're suffering and it's hard. Know that what you're going through, know what you're suffering through. It's not just for you, but it's a be a light and to help other people who are in the midst of darkness so that we can go out and lift up that person and speak to them because we know that God gives us beauty for ashes. Amen. And when your cute little feet get up in the morning <laughs> and hit the ground, you say out loud, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. His power right now is equipping me and working in me to accomplish whatever I need need to accomplish today. I can be a mom. I can be a wife. I can be a business leader. I can be a, a, a pastor. I can do whatever it takes to win today. That's right. You can do whatever it takes to win today. And we thank all of you who partner with us at Cornerstone Television Network that produces hope today to bring these kind of programs on there so you can win, so you can have the victory in Christ. Well, we're so thankful that you joined us for hope today. And we want you to trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding because he's with you. We love you. Have a good day. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the process of healing. Author and pastor Steve Carter invites you to live out the joy, peace, and purpose for which God created you to do so. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.